Now, starting with you, sir, of course, you'd spoken to me about the Chinese dissent that was taking place. Why don't you appraise our viewers a little on that, sir? Over to you. Uh, what was the question again? I missed that part. I'm sorry. Chinese sir, what? I was talking about the Chinese dissident that you and I were talking about, sir. Oh, dissident. Yes, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so um, viewers, here is something very interesting that has been coming over the last few years. There is this Chinese billionaire called Miles Kwok, M-I-L-E-S-K-W-O-K. -E he is in hiding in the United States. He has been granted asylum and he had some very interesting stories to tell. And what is interesting about what he says is that he predicts something and then he says that it will happen in a few months time and the exact same thing happens. For example, there was a group called the HNA, Hunan Airlines Group, and, and this group, the group is 280 billion US dollars worth. And, and the CEO of this group, this man, Miles Kwok predicted, will be accidentally killed. And sure enough, a few months later, in France, he supposedly died from falling from a three-foot wall. Think about it, three-foot wall. Can somebody fall from a three-foot wall and die? Anyway, that was the story given. So like that, he has been predicting a bunch of things. The other thing he predicted was that there is a very famous popular Chinese actress called Fan Bing Bing, Bing Bing. And, and he said that there is something hanky-panky there. And sure enough, this lady went missing for 44 days or something like that. Nobody knew where she was. And then suddenly she resurfaces. And his allegations are that the number two in the current CCP structure, his name is um, Wang Kishan. He, he's alleging this, I'm not. He's alleging that this man wants to become the premier. And if there is a coup, and if I'm proved right, then you know that Miles Quark's predictions have come true. The other thing he also said was that Jack Ma is not really the owner of Alibaba and that all his holdings will be mysteriously handed over or assigned to a, a body which essentially is an arm of the government and sure enough i believe that is what is happening now although there is no for or against it but there has been an eerie silence about what is going on there so all these things point to some palace intrigues happening in china and it is a known fact that the top politicians in china were sorting their money abroad like mad. For example, I'll give you another example. Till about two years ago, uh, with up to the first two years of Trump's reign, it was not at all uncommon for Chinese to come and buy up multi-million dollar properties in the state of California. And the way they would buy it is they would bring a suitcase full of dollars, bring the dollars, pay the whole thing down, like $2 million in dollars is a lot of money to carry around. And that's exactly what they were doing until U.S. For some time, U.S. was allowing all this because they figured, well, I don't care about money coming in because that comes into the economy. It creates jobs and opportunities and so on and so forth. Then under Trump, they figured out that this was actually laundered money coming into the Indian, uh, the American system. Then what they did was they started tightening the know your client uh, rules, KYC norms, and they said that anybody who is, uh, you know, buying uh, properties for cash down needs to prove that the money was legally earned and that the taxes were paid at the country of origin. Now, the Chinese had a problem with that, so they couldn't, uh, you know, prove that. So what the Chinese then did was very, very clever. They started taking the money, putting it in Canada's banks and getting a check from Canada and then using that check, they would buy the real estate property in the United States. This went on for a few months. Then the US woke up to that and they said, okay, we are going to enlarge this KYC. We are going to make it KYCC. That is, know your client's client. In other words, the Canadian bank now had to certify that the money was actually, the taxes were actually paid on the money that came in. So that's how they blocked it. Then what happened? <laughs> the Chinese started buying property in Canada. Vancouver real estate uh, values just started shooting up. And then Vancouver had to pass new laws. They said foreign owners who are buy, wanting to buy land, they had to pay a premium. Second law they passed after one or two years because it was not stopping. They were willing, and the Chinese were willing to pay 10, 15% premium. It wasn't stopping. Then they put another law 
saying that if you buy an apartment, even if you are not living in the apartment, you still have to pay not living tax. It was like a fifteen percent that you had to still pay. So they 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 were trying to tamp it down, and and slowly but steadily the thing has been coming down. But the long and short of it is the. the people who were you know going along the political ladders of the chinese community uh, communist uh, party have made a lot of money and they have been parking this thing quietly in many many countries in us it came to light because the financial systems are very transparent we don't know how much went into tax havens we have no clue of that remember that macau is one of the biggest tax havens and that is just like hong kong it used to be a portuguese territory and it also came back to mainland china but they are they have a separate system so money could be there also and there's an interesting thing about uh, if you remember adhir ranjan choudhury made a statement saying about talking about china and then a day later he withdrew it nobody really asked why he withdrew it so there is there is a very interesting story there and i expect that mr rahul gandhi's tweet that came out today might also suffer the same fate anyway i could be wrong too the, the long and short of it is china has deeply penetrated many system in fact in harvard they practically rule the roost they have been pumping money into harvard and and the other interesting place where they have got a lot of property they figured that boston having all these big schools harvard and mit and and you know lots of universities like uh, uh, grand uh, brandeis and bunch of universities i mean i can go on on boston university is a good one boston college so all these people that uh, you know of chinese origin their parents were buying them homes so they could come there live in the homes and then go attend college and then after that they could make a living by just renting the thing as a property like you know airbnb and things like that to make money off of that so a lot of these things were going on in the us and slowly but steadily trump has been ta- cracking down on all these things that you can't do this you can't do this you can't do this you can't do this however the biggest problem that the united states had leading up to the covid thing was the intellectual property protection or the lack thereof in china now that is a huge problem in fact i am an inventor myself and when when in 2001 or something like that i got my first patent issued in china and i was over the moon i said oh i have now patents even in china and the patent attorney <laughs> looked at me and he laughed yes. and i said why are you laughing at me he said you know that patent is not what the paper it's written on all the chinese company has to do even if they are caught stealing is to give you an apology and and an apology no 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 cash compensation no punitive damages no compensatory damages none of that sort so china has essentially become a industrial powerhouse not by innovating but by being good at copying so you can only do so well when people allow you to copy it because they figured that you are an efficient manufacturing house but with covid virus there is a perception in the world that perhaps china knew about it and they deliberately let it leak because i'll give you a simple reason why everybody thinks that way you know when the first time corona one hit it was only localized to wuhan and they did not allow anyone from wuhan to leave and settle outside of uh, outside inside china but they allowed everybody from wuhan to leave outside the country everybody could fly out of wuhan to other countries in fact many countries say italy for example new york they say that the the corona virus spread was happening because of that so why is it that china wouldn't allow its own population out of wuhan to say, go back to their places inside china but they were allowing people to go out why could they have not brought the whole thing under control even the foreign citizens and once it was under control and they consistently tested negative then they could have allowed them to leave for their home uh, countries of course. they didn't do that so this this is the big problem this is the question that china is unable to answer and now corona 2 has come we don't know what the effects of that are going to be so we are in for some very interesting times I don't believe that China is what it used to be as of even 2018. It's been a steady downhill uh, spiral for them, 
and uh, with no ship leaving their uh, docks for the, as far as products are concerned it's it's very very interesting how it's going to play out in fact i am hearing more and more that america wants to build the products back in the us of a they don't even want to import from other people so we have to see how much uh, you know how effective america is i mean if the government gives them the right kind of incentives you know the price differential between making a product in china and have it shipped out to the united states the price differential is only like 6 to 8% for most products in other words if the us government says okay i will let you uh, you know uh, go on a lower tax bracket so that you don't have to let this 6 to 8% kill your technology but you ramp up you make your own production here and by efficiencies of process then you bring down your cost then what happens is that us will be back to what it was up until perhaps 1990s or maybe late 1990s that's when the exodus to china started before that of course there was a small exodus to taiwan too and and because taiwan is not as big as china it, the the pain wasn't felt, felt that much but with china it is right front and center china can manufacture anything for a fraction of the price that it costs they actually uh, you know underwrite the product pricing just to capture market share and once they have driven out the competitors then start, they start ra raising the uh, prices just think about it j17 is the f16 equivalent and china has built the whole thing themselves and and general motors a few years ago they went for a car show in china and they got a horror there was a there was a car that was in their design labs which was going to be introduced to the market 2 years from that point and the same exact design was being displayed by a chinese manufacturer so they had copied the design itself so the amount of copying that happens in china is just unbelievable i'll give you another example some of the servers that were used by the cloud computing companies amazon apple uh, microsoft um you know you you name it all these uh, google all these people were buying um, their servers from a specific manufacturer i even give you the name of the manufacturer the very famous brand called supermicro now supermicro what they did was they they didn't know that they were doing this but what happened was a lot of these servers that landed in us they had a small tiny chip which was actually a wifi chip what that chip could do was periodically it could call home just like et you know et the movie it would call home and and it would take whatever the data was there on that particular server and send it back so there was a lot of snooping that happened and when they were caught apple or uh, amazon they kept saying that no it didn't happen no it did, did not happen until there were lots of technical websites that proved them wrong they said no if you have this particular motherboard from supermicro and if you have this particular chip on this this is a wifi chip so stop stop lying about it of course so they have done some corrections so whatever you are seeing play uh, with uh, play out with uh, trump this is an escalation of frustration of american companies that was built over 25 years sorry for cutting years. sorry for cutting you in sir we just address by you sir now a question that i'm throwing to all our guests of course when it comes to the chinese perspective right now they are the ones who gave this world a pandemic the corona virus after giving the world a pandemic they were also the first one to restart its economy now amidst all of this the corona has resurged in their country china is in no state to go into war china cannot afford a war right now india on the other hand is not looking to go into war right now So how long do we keep tolerating this bullying attitude that the dragon has over us? Starting with you Mr. Shri Iyer, um, you've not spoken for some time. Over to you sir. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. I was just waiting to uh, confirm that I was me host to talk now. Yes sir. Now see this is I think this is some palace intrigues like I said about threat vector it talks about something very very similar to this there is very unclear there, there are no elections in china right so if somebody is sitting in the gaddi and don't want to move what do you do you have to figure out a way to 
get rid of that person. Now, if you take a look back in history, in 1971 September, the then defense uh, minister tried to uh, uh, perform a coup against Mao Zedong. And when he was caught, he tried to flee by flying out to Mongolia. Unfortunately for him, Mao tracked down that plane and had it shot down. And as soon as he did that, this was in September 1971, then he put a complete iron lid on all the army activity of China, which is why China didn't uh, you know, poke its nose in the 1971 war with Bangladesh. Think, think about it. They were so close. They could have easily just come in and prevented the Indian army from marching in. They didn't do that. It was lucky for India. The timing was just right. Now, the, so what I'm trying to say is, let's not look at this one uh, sit, set of deaths as something that you know uh, China wants to have a fight. The the news that is coming, and I think the U.S. numbers are understated. I believe my information is that 43 Chinese died. Many died because there was a landslide. And, and and this is a very steep ravine. Once you fall, you, you just fall to your death. There's nothing to hold on to. And all this happened at the night. So probably people didn't even know where to look when they were falling. It's a very, very unfortunate way to die. But it is 43 and India was 20. And the only reason Indian numbers are lower is because the landslide allegedly happened on the place where the Chinese were. In fact, the numbers wise, if you look at it, right, the people who are on this, uh, Cat's ledge. If you look at the numbers, I believe it, India had 200 and they had like 400, and and perhaps it was a weight that you know the land uh, the the land gave way. We don't know that. I believe that saner minds will prevail. They'll have to take stock of what they have. But if you look at history, right, every time China has tried to be the aggressor, and then after having occupied the land, then they say, okay, let's sit down for talks. They will not move back. So India should not even have talked on June 8th. They should have just, once they had the troops in place, they could have gone to some other area where Chinese were probably not manning it well and gone and occupied that part and then said, okay, now let's talk so that you can go back and retreat to your old positions. Now, what India has done is India is on a weaker, has a weaker hand right now. They have to politely, nicely, aggressively, whichever way you want to, phrase it, ask them to go back to their positions prior to April 20th. Now, this is not something, this is like Lato ke booth. They are not going to bato se nahi wale, you know. True, so sir. There is, there, is, there is the challenge that India has. How are you going to sit across a table and tell them to go? They are not going to go. And, and remember, the palace coup is a different dimension playing out there. But whoever comes to power, he might still think, oh, we can pressure India this way. Let's do that. So India also has the economic imbalance that they can use effectively. But for that, India needs to really turn on the electricity and start building infrastructure like mad. 24-7 electricity, 24-7 water, any place to any place in the shortest amount of time. All these things take years to do, but it, there are pockets of India where you can do today. The southern part of India has a very good connectivity, has a lot of... Uh, excellent workforce. India can turn back the clock and start manufacturing a lot of things that it needs for its own use. DN Jha wants to make a point. Of course, now Shri, Shri Iyer wanted to make a point. Of course, Shri Iyer, how much credibility do you see in these statements? Because as I had said that, you know, Xi Jinping is trying to do this to get the assurance of his citizens. Now, Joyita has turned around and said that, you know, he's doing this to dominate in the World Forum, which is also a very valid point. The last thing a communist regime needs is for the people of the country to lose hope in its government. So what do you think this attack comes in what point of time? Because as I've re reiterated before, and I'm reiterating it again right now, China cannot afford a war. Over to you. Well, yes, so China cannot afford a war, yes. But China is also seeing a big problem. What I'm having here is an Apple phone. And, and you can see the Apple logo there. Of course. See, what people thought when the lockdown started in the US around March, they thought that Apple would have a huge problem fulfilling its orders and that they would lose a huge market that is China. Guess what? 
first few weeks uh, apple stock went down but what i'm hearing in the stores is apple has found a way to get around the fact that they have to uh, find out a way to manufacture what they can't do it in mainland china elsewhere and today apple is is not short of anything it's, it's as if business as usual they just opened 70 more stores so this kind of stuff apple is a big 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 user of china's resources from their rare earth metals uh, metals for uh, batteries to all the other things right so um, they are very frustrated that if apple which they thought would be in a lot of pain and would be actually complaining to the u.s government is actually figured out a way and they are comfortably handling all the load now what do we do so what is the next thing that's going to happen a lot of country uh, co uh, countries are going to have their businesses move from china to other places indonesia vietnam bangladesh india and so on and so forth so this is a process that is going to continue and remember last time i was on this uh, panel like last of the previous term before that i mentioned that us is actively trying to get its manufacturing back in the us True. tesla which is the most profitable car in the us today manufactures everything in the most expensive state in the us california they manufacture the plan their, their car here so the, the what it what i'm trying to say is that if you set your mind to it you can find out a way to be profitable and be able to manufacture what you need yourself so the bigger strategy for the united states is to bring everything back home because a lot of workforce is in pain right now it's like 18 to 20 percent is unemployed and and the only way to get them employed is by getting all these jobs back here what's going to happen china is going to lose even more this is a flash in the pan the skirmish the killing is very unfortunate what happened but i believe that uh, china will not move back unless they are pressured to do so by something that india figures out looks at a place where it is perhaps easier for india to do the intrusion and then say okay we will move back here you move back there and we call we call it even i don't think talks are going to solve this problem because if they do that then it's a loss of face for the chinese even though they may be trying to you know tamp all the information uh, leaking to its public word still gets around this is not the only way there will be some cousin of some uh, soldier who would have heard something from another soldier brother so these things have a way of finding the target because every country especially those countries that are not democratic don't trust their government you know you as an american i don't trust my government and i'm sure we have a lot of you guys have a lot of questions of the indian government too that is the nature of this business of and, course. and so the, the data will get back to people and they will know i think this coup is kind of boiling coming to a boiling point now the milk is getting ready to boil over we have to wait and see who it is that comes on top and that is an interesting question here. of course the dnj wants to make a point let's